Hello, I'm Aaron Brogan. And I'm Kristen Legata. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Today we'll tell you about how you can help low-income children get the school supplies they need and how seniors in the county can take advantage of local nutritious produce. But first, making headlines. We received some sad news earlier this week when it was discovered that a former local educator and administrator was found murdered in Florida. William Norman was a beloved principal at Chesapeake High School when it opened in 1977 and dedicated 28 years to the Anne Arundel County public school system. Co-workers and students this week recalled Norman as a hardworking, forward-thinking educator who treated everyone with respect and had a lasting impact. Mr. Norman retired from the public school system and made his way to Florida where he purchased property in Tamarack, Florida. His body was found last week and Florida police arrested Anderley Desir and David Weintraub, both 19. Both men admitted to killing Norman and were charged with premeditated murder. The cause of death has yet to be determined. Norman is survived by two sons. His picture still hangs outside the Chesapeake Auditorium dedicated to him nearly 30 years ago. William Norman was 76 years old. Leaders of Maryland's seven most populous jurisdictions say that they were not able to dispatch emergency crews because utilities couldn't immediately pinpoint the address of power outages resulting from the deadly June 29th derecho storm. In a letter Tuesday to the Public Service Commission, Central Maryland leaders asked the state's utility regulator to explore improving disclosures of outage locations, burying power lines, and elevating power companies' staffing levels. County Executive John Leopold, along with the executives of Baltimore, Hartford, Howard, Montgomery, Prince George's County, and the City of Baltimore signed the letter. The municipal leaders acknowledge that burying power lines is an expensive proposition. bg &E officials have said it could cost $1 million per mile of power lines, while PSC Chairman Douglas Nazarene said it could cost each customer about $400 each year. But they urge Nazarene to explore nothing less, at least looking for areas that could most benefit from underground wires. The letter from local leaders also questioned utilities' dependence on out-of-state crews assisting in major, major outages such as the June storm. BTV officials, in a statement, were receptive to the concerns of the leaders. County Executive John R. Leopold urges citizens to donate school supplies for 1,500 needy children in advance of the next school year. Often the most important aspect of getting children ready to learn is making sure they have the basics, a healthy meal, a good teacher, and the right supplies. This program will go a long way to help students get a good education, said Mr. Leopold. There are over 7,000 children in Anne Arundel County who qualify for federal lunch assistance, an indication that the children's families are low income. Since 1989, the Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services has partnered with Anne Arundel County Public Schools to help children who attend the county's public elementary schools. Here's how the program works. Donors, individuals, businesses, and our groups are matched with children in need of school supplies and are provided a list of the required supplies. The donors purchase supplies and backpacks and deliver the items to the guidance office at the elementary schools the second week in August. On average, school supplies cost between $50 and $75, depending upon the child's grade in school. It's easy to help. To find out how you can, call 410-269-4462. And there's more we can review to come. Folks, take a look at our community calendar for upcoming events around your county. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At approximately 2 a.m., officers from the Eastern District responded to the intersection of Hiddenbrook Drive and Crane Highway in Glen Burnie for an indecent exposure call. 
Joining us now is Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy, who has further details on the investigation. Justin. When officers arrived, they received information that a male suspect was running around naked on Crane Highway. Officers on scene observed the suspect partially naked, acting in an incoherent manner and yelling verbal threats and profanities at the officers. The suspect was extremely agitated and appeared to be under the influence of narcotics. As officers approached, that suspect became aggressive and ignored numerous verbal commands. Now, due to his agitated state and non-compliance, an officer deployed a departmentally issued taser in an effort to safely bring the suspect into custody. However, the suspect continued to resist arrest. Now, ultimately, numerous officers were needed to take the suspect into custody. Further investigation yielded about 41.6 grams of suspected PCP and 5.6 grams of suspected crack cocaine in the suspect's clothing. The suspect was transported to Baltimore Washington Medical Center for treatment of some injuries and was later taken to Northern District. That's where he was charged with numerous drug-related charges, along with disorderly conduct, indecent exposure, and resisting arrest. That suspect is James Frederick Brown, age 36, of 7010 Nimitz Drive in Forestville, Maryland. Folks, we're going to move on to our second incident. That one took place on July 10th around 2.42 p.m. That's when officers from the Northern District responded to the 7600 block of Baltimore and Apples Boulevard in Glen Burnie for a report of a stabbing. Now, arriving officers located an 18-year-old male suffering from stab wounds to his upper body. He was then transported to shock trauma in Baltimore with non-life-threatening injuries. The investigation revealed that a verbal altercation took place between the male victim and a male suspect, escalating to the point that the suspect stabbed the victim and fled the scene prior to police arriving. Further investigation uncovered the identity of a possible suspect along with sufficient evidence that was discovered to place an individual under arrest. The suspect was apprehended a short time later at his residence and charged with attempted second degree murder, first degree assault, second degree assault, and reckless endangerment. The knife used during the assault was also later recovered. The suspect is Aaron Matthew Adams, age 21, of 1049 Thomas Road in Glen Burnie, Maryland. Now, folks, as always, if you have any information on crimes or suspects we mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. The number is available 24 hours a day, toll free at 1 866 Lockup, or you could text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274 637. Your third option, visit the website at www.metrocrimestoppers.net. Remember, phone calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might be eligible for a cash reward of up to $2,000. Back to you. Thanks, Justin, for exposing that police incident. Really, Eric? Really? That's what it says in the script. Oh, I'm sure you that. Uh -huh. Well, you know, one of my favorite things about this time of year is all the delicious local produce we have in the area. Mary Felter, public information officer for the department Yes, there's Just a lot of good produce out there. <laughs> you know, you said fruit. I thought it was in my head. Maybe my brain was just spinning things yeah. up. Mary Felter, public information officer for the Department of Aging and Disabilities, made her way to the Anne Arundel County Farmers Market on Riva Road and Harry S. Truman Parkway, where she is talking with Ray Davis, vice president of the market and a farmer selling his own produce. They are discussing the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. Mary. Thank you. Today I'm very pleased to be at the Anne Arundel County Farmers Market that's located at Riva Road and Truman Parkway here in Annapolis. And my guest today is Ray Davis, who's vice president of this organization right now. So welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm here today because we want to talk about the senior nutrition program that's related to Farmers Market. It's actually called the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. And we have coupons that we're going to be giving out to low-income seniors. You must be age 60 and above. You must be an Anne Arundel County resident. And when you come to pick it up, you must um, bring some photo ID. Income eligible, you must be a person with an income of $1,722 per month. Two people can earn up to $2,332 a month. And the more members of your family, the income level goes up. We're going to be giving them out at the department Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting July 16th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Ray, do you um, accept these here at the market? Yes, yes I do, and uh, most of the farmers here do. There's a few that don't, but uh, I would say like 90% of them do. What's the sort of thing that people can buy with the coupons? So they can buy any kind of fruit and vegetable. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they can buy honey. Uh, yes. Jams and jellies they can't buy, mm -hmm. but uh, any kind of fruit, vegetable that they would want, if the if the uh, farmer takes them, 
but like I say, most of them do. They're, They're treated just like cash, aren't they? Yes, yes. And then what you do, like if it doesn't come up to the $5, usually they, they try and give you something to bring it up to the $5. No, they're not allowed to give change, right? right? No change, but what we do, we try and build it up to the $5 range, you know, so that you're not losing anything on the deal, you know. I understand that we're also, the department is going to be presenting these coupons at senior centers on certain days, and if anyone's really interested, they can find out about the coupon program by calling our senior information assistance line. That number is 410 222 4257. We also have information on our webpage at aacounty.org slash aging. Scroll down for the information on the Farmer's Market Coupon Program. We're really happy that you participate in it and that people can get fresh fruits and vegetables. The program doesn't just help the senior, it also helps the farmer, correct? Yes, yes it does and hopefully that we'll get a lot of seniors coming up. It's a very nice program for them. Well, thank you, Ray, for giving me your time today. I appreciate it. I know you've had a lot of customers, so I don't want to keep you from selling your good produce. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This is Mary Felter, Public Information Officer with the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Mary. That sounds like a great program. This week, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to more than 2,140 calls for service. This included 1,258 emergency medical calls and 395 fire calls. This week, county firefighters worked to extinguish two separate fires. One incident displaced a family of four in North County, while a second incident in Annapolis was responsible for the death of an Annapolis resident. With us now to tell us more about these incidences is Division Chief Michael Cox of the Interim County Fire Department. Chief. The first incident occurred around 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, July 7, 2012, when Anne Arundel County firefighters responded to a reported dwelling fire in the 1300 block of Hillborn Drive in the Severn area of the county. The first units to arrive on the scene reported visible fire and smoke coming from a two-story end unit townhouse. Firefighters braving the 104 degree weather conditions stretched hose lines to the interior of the fire building as well as into adjoining homes to keep the flames from spreading. In all, it took 37 firefighters about 40 minutes to bring the two alarm incident under control. One firefighter suffered minor injuries while fighting the blaze. He was treated at the scene for a heat related problem and released. Also, a resident in a neighboring home suffered a medical emergency during the incident. She was also treated by fire department paramedics at the scene but refused transport to the hospital. The fire, which originated on the rear deck area of the townhome, has been ruled accidental and has been attributed to unattended cooking. Damages have been estimated to be approximately $200,000 for all three of the townhomes involved. In a second incident, county firefighters were again called into action around 10 a.m. on Sunday, July 8, 2012, when county firefighters were dispatched to a report of a dwelling fire in the 3400 block of Newport Avenue in the community of Arundel on the Bay in Annapolis. The first unit to arrive on the scene of this incident reported visible flames through the roof of a two-story single-family dwelling. At this time, crews were also advised by neighbors that the occupant of the dwelling was unaccounted for in the residence. Firefighters immediately requested a second alarm and an interior fire attack, as well as search and rescue operations were initiated by the first arriving crews. In all, it took more than 50 firefighters from Anne Arundel County, Annapolis City, and the Naval Academy Fire Departments more than 40 minutes to bring the two-alarm incident under control. During a search of the residence, fire crews did locate one occupant in the dwelling. The occupant, an unknown aged female, suffered fatal injuries as a result of the incident and was pronounced dead at the scene. The name and identity of the deceased is being withheld at this time, pending positive identification and notification of the next of kin. An autopsy will be conducted by the state medical examiner. The fire, which originated in the interior of the dwelling, caused an estimated $200,000 in damages, and the exact cause of the fire remains under investigation. Thanks, Chief. This is the second fatal fire in the county within a week. On Sunday, July 1st, 2012, a Gambrels resident died in a house fire on Ferrara Drive in the community of Chapelgate. A preliminary investigation into this incident revealed that there was no operable smoke detectors in the residence. Firefighters went door-to-door -door in Gambrel's neighborhood on Wednesday, July 4, 2012,
to bring awareness of the incident to residents and the importance of having smoke alarms in preventing fire deaths. During the initiative, firefighters visited 418 homes, tested 132 existing smoke alarms, and installed 52 smoke alarms in house homes that did not have operable smoke detectors, and installed batteries in another 27 alarms. It's unclear if there were any operable smoke detectors in this morning's fatal fire in Annapolis. However, the investigation into the incident is still continuing. July 4th, they were out there, firefighters out there working hard as they do every day. The county executive went door-to-door uh, -door with them and, uh, <clears throat> you know, was able to help people get smoke detectors. That's always a good thing. That is good. I can't imagine wearing those suits, though, in this heat. I don't think they were wearing the suits, but July 4th, it was just July 4th. Yes. We were off. We were. As I say, the B team was here. <laughs> uh, the B team, the best team for B team. Dave Abrams and Tracy uh, filled in for us on July 4th and did a good job because I understand you had a big July 4th party on a roof. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Um, I was with friends in Canton on a rooftop. Um, friends on a roof, huh? Friends on a roof. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. Um, lots of uh, good food. Mm -hmm. And we uh, had a lot of great music. It was, it was nice. Walked out of the harbor. You know what? I have to say, for a Wednesday, it was pretty empty downtown. Really? I on think. the 4th? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Because, because it was Wednesday. I think. So could you walk. see the fireworks from the roof with all of your friends? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but why do you keep saying it that way? I don't know, just your friends. So you have a lot of friends up there. Keep saying you have a lot of emphasis on friends. Oh, I'm, 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 did you at home understand? I just said friends. Yeah, a lot of my friends. Exactly. But quotes are in that. No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> could, but could you see the fireworks? A lot of good yeah, fireworks. Yeah, they were excellent this year. Good. And, and your friends like them too, right? My friends love them. <laughs> a great time with my friends. That's good. Um, but it's really neat because from where we were on the roof, you could see fireworks over in Towson. You could see oh, wow. fireworks uh, downtown. You could see fireworks, I think, over near Downs Park they were doing them too because we saw them in all oh, different right. areas. So it was really neat. There was a lot of different ones going off. What did you do? I uh, went down to Annapolis, mm -hmm. the capital of Maryland, sat there, and the kids got to see the uh, fireworks over the buildings. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> Had a good fourth. Stay in the pool a lot. Yeah. It was hot. That was the place yeah, to be. In the pool. That's right. But uh, I'm on vacation next week. I'm away. So, uh, <laughs> well, I'd like to spring things on you live right here in the interview. So I'll be away Great. next week. So uh, I think we'll have a, a, a wonderful co host for you sitting in this chair, other than me, oh. for next week. Am I coming back? We'll see. We'll Maybe. see. The audience still has to vote. It's out there. Vote. Press like one. Last Press house. one. It's like Last <laughs> House and Big Brother. Voter in or voter out. Yeah. So. Well, folks, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archived episodes are available at blip.tv and on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free, yes, free video podcast at iTunes or like us on Facebook at Rumble TV. Please tune in again next week for more news and highlights from around your county. We'll see you next time.